Okay, and on uh, this presentation, we're going to demonstrate how to uh, install the BlueSeer ERP application on a Linux desktop. Now, the target desktop for this uh, installation uh, demonstration is the uh, Linux Mint version 20. But in practice, these procedures can be used to install BlueSeer on essentially and most any Linux distro. Um, BlueSeer ERP comes with two types of database backends. It comes with a, an SQLite backend for single user, single connection. Uh, the SQLite is the version that we will be installing here. It also comes with a MySQL backend for uh, multiple users, uh, multiple connections, and yeah, cloud deployment options. Um, there are two types of downloads for Linux for the BlueSeer application for Linux. Uh, on the BlueSeer.com website, uh, there's a the generic.zip version. And there's a Debian-based uh, .deb package as well. But we're going to be using generic .zip version here so that we can demonstrate how to uh, do the install for Debian-based and non-Debian-based uh, Linux distros. Also, uh, the BlueSphere can be installed on uh, not only Win uh, Linux, but also on Windows as well. But uh, we're going to concentrate primarily on the Linux desktop here. So with that said, let's move right along to the... Uh, Instructions. So the uh, action items that you have to do the, do the install is a very simple process. You essentially download a zip file, you extract the zip file, and then you execute the application. Everything is bundled within the, uh, the zip file. Your Java runtime is bundled inside the, uh, the .zip. It's bundled inside the application. Uh, all libraries and all necessary executables are bundled within the application. So it's pretty much a download, extract, and, and execute. So with that said, let's go ahead and download the, uh, the package here. We're going to copy this URL. And then we're going to move over here to a terminal. First, we're going to clean it up. Uh, I had actually already pre-installed this, so just to test it. So with that said, we've got a clean directory. We're going to use wget to do the download, and we're going to right click, and we're going to paste, and we're going to download. Uh, it'll take a few minutes, if that, uh, depending on your bandwidth, and the download size I think is roughly about 100 meg at this point, and it's just about done. Oh, it's done. Okay, we should have a zip file, so now let's unzip the file using the unzip command. .linux.v62.zip and we're going to use the minus D parameter uh, and give it the directory name of BlueSeer. What the minus D parameter is going to do is create a directory called BlueSeer inside of your parent directory and uh, extract the contents of the zip file into that directory. So there's the full command. Press enter. And there we go. So we, now we should have a directory, and we do, a directory called BlueSeer. And we're going to cd to that directory, pwd, there's the full path, and then there are the contents of that directory. And that's it. There are, at this point, you have a functional instance of BlueSeer ERP on your Linux desktop. Now we're going to execute the application here by typing in login.sh. And there we go. Uh, the login and password for this is admin and admin respectively. You will want to change that password once you do your install. Oh yeah, and one of the first things that you have to do uh, when you first execute the BlueSeer application is you have to choose a country of origin. The purpose of the country of origin is to establish the default currency for the application. Uh, even though BlueSeer has, can accommodate multiple currencies, it must have a default currency because the uh, general ledger can only be reported in one currency. So I'm going to choose United States for US dollars. Click commit and it'll ask you to restart the application. And there we go. And that is it. It is now implemented, uh, or installed I should say. Uh, for very simple scenarios where you're, you're, in a, you're a small company or a small startup, uh, mom and pop or whatever, you can go ahead and create your items here, your customers, 
Uh, you can essentially, within a matter of minutes, be up and running, uh, creating orders, creating invoices, uh, and tracking your inventory. Uh, for the purpose of reviewing and exploring the functionality of the application, you can uh, install some, uh, some test data. We have a fictitious manufacturing company that manufactures bicycles. Uh, and that data can be imported by going to admin, master data import, test data. Now it'll prompt you and let you know that you should not execute this against the production database. Uh, it will take a few minutes. So what this is doing is creating some fictitious data, creating work centers, routings, items, bill of materials, and customers. Uh, and it should also create some, yeah, some random sales orders, about a year's worth of random sales orders, and some, uh, some purchase orders, some random purchase orders as well. And it'll, it'll take about a minute or two, if that. Uh, and then I think one of the last steps is it rolls the items that it just created, rolls the cost. Yeah, there it goes. And it's done. So now you have uh, <clears throat> some sample data to work with to actually explore some of the functionality of the application itself. If you go to item browse, you can actually see the items that were created. You can see these finished goods, these different type of bicycles, and the components, purchase components, that make up these, uh, these finished goods. You can also go to the order, order browse menu, uh, look at some of the orders. And you can explore some of these line items of the orders. Uh, we'll go to this one here. And you can actually manipulate these orders by printing out the orders, uh, invoicing the orders, and printing out invoices, uh, things like that. You can uh, just explore some of the functionality that, that comes with the package. Uh, you can look at uh, accounts receivable aging. You can look at some of the, the inventory reductions based on the fact that you shipped the product. Uh, just pretty much anything that you want. You have the sample data there to, to do some uh, reports and to do some exercise in some of the maintenance windows. Okay, with that said, uh, that there is a fully uh, functional ERP. It takes, again, it just takes a matter of minutes to have it installed on, the, uh, on your Linux desktop. Uh, we're going to go a step further, and you can, you do have the option of converting that SQLite database to a MySQL backend. And the uh, procedure for that is very simple, but it does require you to have MySQL already installed on your target server. Uh, I will show that I do have, I hope I do have. Yes, I've got MySQL already installed on my local, local box here. Uh, and I'll walk through the procedure here real quick to convert the back end from SQLite to MySQL. There is a script in the, uh, in the contents of the extraction file that you can run that will do that. And it will convert this BS config file from a, let's look at that. Right now it's currently SQLite, but the script will convert that to a uh, MySQL while it's also doing the install of the, uh, the MySQL schema. So with that said, let's go ahead and run that process here, mysql install.sh. And it will prompt you for uh, three pieces of information. The first being, where is your mysql database? Uh, it can be on the local host or it can be some other IP address, some other server. Uh, in my case, it's on the local host, so I'm going to type local host. It will also prompt you for the administrator password for the mysql database. Uh, mine is fairly simple. And then I'll also ask you for uh, an, uh, a language code. And in this case, I'm going to choose English. And it just takes a you know, couple of seconds to do the, uh, the installation of the database schema. It also loads some master data. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much done. There we go. So now, let's review the contents of the bs.config file again. And we'll see that the DB type has moved over to MySQL. Uh, also, and the driver is also MySQL database driver. So with that said, we're going to log in again and prove to ourselves that we have a MySQL backend database. It should prompt us for the country of origin again because it is a fresh install, and it does. So we'll walk real quick through that procedure. Let's choose something else here. Let's choose uh, Turkey. I have no idea what the currency in Turkey is, but we're about to find out. 
Let me log in again, admin, admin, and let's go see what the currency, default currency is, TR what? I hope that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, there's, that's how to convert from the SQ backend database, SQLite backend database, to the MySQL database. Uh, the MySQL database is, you have to use the MySQL backend if you're having more than one user connection, if you have multiple connections. Uh, the performance is pretty good. If you can put that on anywhere on your LAN server, uh, a separate server, and you should see some uh, reasonable performance. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you can, there are deployment options to deploy my, or Blue Seer into the cloud. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Where am I at here? Yeah. We have a, you can deploy Blue Seer into the, the cloud, and I'm going to have another video at some point to where I show how to uh, do a inst Blue Seer installation into one of the three cloud providers here. But I just wanted to mention the fact that you can install Blue Seer into one of the three cloud providers. Uh, and the essence of that, when I say that, is that really the, the meat and potatoes of what you're installing in the cloud is the MySQL database. Uh, all three of these cloud providers uh, provide services for MySQL instances within a virtual machine in the cloud. So, and uh, the cost of that is relatively cheap. Uh, and performance is not too bad either. But the performance is a little bit slower. I will mention that the performance is a little bit slower depending on the region of your virtual machine uh, and where you are within that region. Um, but yeah, all three of these can do it. And some of the advantages of that is that uh, if you have other users other than your LAN and WAN users, you have somebody else in another global region that needs to basically come through the internet and connect to your database, this is the way to go. Uh, you're pretty much going to have to have a Blue Seer deployed into one of the cloud providers. Um, the cost for, for these three cloud providers for hosting a MySQL database instance is relatively cheap. And they do provide multiple options for the operating system type that you want. I think all three of these uh, provide options for Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE, some other Linux distros as well, as well as, as Windows. So, and one of the other main uh, advantages of it is that supporting that database is a lot easier. If it's in the cloud, they do offer a lot of different tools for third-party people to provide services and to provide support maintenance for that database instance. Uh, if it is in the cloud. But again, yeah, we will be creating another uh, another video that shows how to install Blue Seer in the cloud. So with that said, that is it. Uh, if you do come across a Linux distro that you have problems doing these, this procedure, doing this install on that uh, Linux distro, let us know. We, we want to hear about it. Uh, so I sent an email to support at blueseer.com. Or uh, better yet, go to the uh, project source site at github.com, blueseererp, slash blueseer. You can enter a issues ticket or a discussion and uh, just let us know your experience. So that concludes this presentation. Hope it was helpful uh, and enjoy. All right.